Now, recently, I guess over the last few years, I have gotten into Macs a lot more. And there's a bunch of reasons for that. One of them is that I can have just a dedicated computer system for that, like for this stuff. And that's it. I don't have to worry about, you know, restarting it, resetting it, rebuilding it. The other rig that I have is the gaming rig. And that I use now only, only for gaming. Because I find myself, sometimes you install a NVIDIA driver, it corrupts everything, you have to install everything again. Sometimes you need to refresh the system. Of course, if I do that with, you know, OBS Studio, that's kind of like what I'm using here with camera and, you know, all these screens and whatnot. But yeah, it's just easier. But so it's gotten me into using Apple products a lot more, Macs especially. Now I'm a, for the most part, a Google ecosystem kind of guy. So, you know, I'm all over the place really. Microsoft, Apple, Google, and I find good things in each of them. Obviously Windows is Windows and Microsoft is, well, going down a a road that I don't know where they're going. I don't think they even know where they're going either. But, you know, it's it's good. There's good things about each of them. So Windows for gaming, without that, I mean, I love gaming, so I can't say bye-bye to Windows. Uh, Apple, very productive. And Google, also very productive and easy to use. So, uh, but, you know, this video is really not about that. It's, well, it was supposed to be about me talking about the new <laughs> Mac Pros, the M5s that are coming up. And I'm not going to go into a lot of super detail about that because it's a lot of rumors so far, but why you should probably hold off buying an M4 anything right now based on the fact that Apple will soon be releasing the M5. This would be a great time to remind you to do everything that's up here, like share, subscribe, hit the notification bell as well. That's important. So you can notify when I release a new video and of course comment. Now this is Matt and he has a great channel. If you are into, well, Max, he talks a lot about iPads and MacBooks and I will link to his channel in the YouTube description down below if you want to check it out. So let's talk a little bit about why you should probably hold off buying an M4 Mac anything right now because, well, Apple will soon be in a few months releasing M5 products. Now, I was never really interested in iPad products. However, that might change because of the new operating system, the iOS 26 that's in beta right now. You can download it and it transforms basically your iPad into a MacBook in a way, gives it that kind of functionality. It's just incredible. So if you're thinking about getting an iPad Pro M4, you might want to wait for the M5 version of that. It looks like, again, this, these are rumors, it will be a pretty big revamp. It will come with an OLED display and it will be super, super thin. But most importantly, it will include that M5 chip, which will be a, a little bit faster. Who knows how much faster it will be? And who knows really the configurations that Apple will give you with this particular unit. Now, it will more than likely cost more. Well, it will cost more than the iPad Pro M5s, and they are all already pretty expensive. But still, you, you know, you're pretty close right now. So unless you can get a great deal, an iPad Pro M4, I would I would hold off. And the MacBook Pro M5 is rumored to be released as well in the fall, October or November. And that's typically Apple's, you know, refresh cycle anyway. This will be in a number of different versions, the M5, the M5 Pro, and the M5 Max chip variants. However, similar to the iPad Pro, a major design overhaul OLEDs are mentioned as well. So that means that the hopefully overall form factor of the MacBook Pro will be a little thinner because right now, well, always, MacBook Pros have been pretty thick compared to the MacBook Airs. So aside from it being thinner, I don't know, I kind of think that the overall design will be probably the same until a major, major redesign happens for the M6 chip and who knows, I guess maybe at the end of 2026 for that. Now, how much faster will these 
products be, the M4 compared to the M5? Well, rumor has it they should be between 15 to 25% faster. However, if there is a pretty decent overall redesign, and I don't think, honestly, there will be between the M4 and the M5, aside from the fact that the MacBooks will be a lot thinner, and for a lot of people, that's going to be a godsend because you can have all the power of a MacBook Pro, and it's thin, and you can put it in your bag or carry it around, and it's light would be really, really good. So let's just say you have an M1 MacBook right now. Should you hold off and maybe wait for the M5 or should you wait even longer for the M6? Well, that's a choice that you will have to make, obviously. But yeah, the M6 will be a long ways off. I would recommend if you need one soon and you can't wait, well, get an M4 now. But if you can wait a little longer, hold off for you know, the M5 products and see what they're like. Of course, your comments are always welcome and I would love to hear, and I'm sure other people would as well from you and what you think about this. Maybe you have all kinds of Mac products and you have all kinds of insight as well on these products.